Hey everybody, Omar here, the Knife Shark Guy, and I am back with another fun-filled video for you. And today's video, my favorite top 10 South African customs out of my 34 customs. I actually framed them down to these 10 as my all-time favorites. And the others that did not make my list, it doesn't mean that I do not love those customs. Uh, it's just that these top 10 were chosen uh, on a bar of uh, pretty much on the action, the aesthetics, ease of use, all of that. Uh, they were all, they were chosen and each one of these kind of came up uh, all high marks in all three of those categories. Action, ease of use, and aesthetics. And that's what these top 10 knives are. Now keep in mind this is my own personal choice i'm going to go over uh all of them uh for some of these i actually have cards for the names of the knives so hopefully i won't um forget the uh i won't forget the name but in case i do i've got that information here so we're going to start off with uh this one right here this one is by jd van de Venter. uh this one is called the gold mini flipper and it's got blue twill and marble carbon fiber the steel on this guy is m390 m390 is the uh is the go-to steel on almost all of these uh south african knives that i have it's just a safe choice it wasn't necessarily you know like my favorite steel but i saw it as a safe choice it's a super steel so why not right so let's give you a quick, good quick look at this one uh, we've got a zirconium pocket clip. You can see the beautiful blue twill uh, around that knife there. And then we've got black marble carbon fiber up against the blue twill, which is really, really, very nice. Um, I love the mixture of both of these materials on the knife. Uh, I just thought it was absolutely beautiful, the blue and the black uh, combination going here. And then, of course, you've got this zirconium pocket clip with these little sort of sparkles on it really very pretty so aesthetically this one came out as a as one of the top tens but guess what the action on this guy is ridiculous this is on um regular steel ball bearings ikbs and this thing just drops shut you can see as soon as i flip it and then close the knife it just drops down super easy the uh, centering on that is dead on like it is on most of these knives this is not a front flipper by the way this is considered a forward flipper it looks like it's a front flipper but really it's a regular flipper it's just that we don't have the uh, pocket pecker like it like you see in the upcoming knife that I'm going to show you in a second um, on this one where it kind of sticks out uh, so I, I got this knife for that particular reason, uh, that it's still a regular flipper, uh, but, you know, you don't have the pocket picker sticking out. So J.D. Van Deventer Gold Midi. Really beautiful knife. The next one is a collaboration by Tashi Barucha, and the main uh, collaborator on this is Andre Van Heerten. So the design shape of the knife is made by French designer Tashi Barucha. Uh, and this is called the, if I can remember correctly, the M44 Righteous Flipper. Really beautiful piece. This is made of snake wood. Now what makes this knife so interesting with the aesthetics is that this is all one piece i have no idea how he did that you would think that this carbon fiber here is one piece and then these two with the snake wood is also a second piece put in you in other words you would think that the snake wood was put on and then they put this carbon fiber uh the outline of the carbon fiber was put on top of that but I spoke to the guys where I bought the knife at the Blade Gallery. They said it was done all in one piece. I just don't know how he did that. 
Got a beautiful sort of drop point blade. It's a really big, thick knife. Uh, again, the action on this is just as stellar as it is on this one. Just ridiculous. This also runs on ceramic IKBS ball bearings. Uh, this one runs on, yeah, ceramic bearings. This one runs on regular steel bearings. This one runs on ceramic. And you can tell because it's very, very smooth. The way it opens and closes. Uh, the snake wood and the black carbon fiber surrounding it is just a fantastic touch. We've got a uh, zirconium pocket clip, black zirconium pocket clip. Really very nice. The thing looks like glass, but it's really like zir zirconium on that. Really, just really, really nice. We've got gold titanium liners. So again, again with the aesthetics. Uh, it's kind of hard to see it, but yeah, this is all gold titanium liner. So you got the gold and the and the snake wood brown and black. That just looks fantastic. The steel on this guy is CTS XHP. Really great steel. M44 Righteous. I'm going to move this knife down to the last one and switch it with this one because there's a very special reason why. It's one of those saving your best for last. Uh, so the next knife on my list is by John Arnold. He is a very underrated knife maker, and this knife is called the Simba Tactical Interframe Front Flipper. You can see why I need cards to remind me the names for these knives, because uh, basically they just make up these names for these pieces. I don't know how. Um, it's just an interesting, interesting way to name a knife. But in any case, uh, yeah, this is called the Simba Tactical Interframe Front Flipper with Black G10 and Carbon Fiber. So we've got the Black G10 surrounding the knife. Similar setup to the Snakewood piece that I just showed you. Uh, it's all it's it's all one piece. I don't know how they do that. It's done by hand. Uh, all these knives are made completely by hand. Um, with, you know, with very little, very little machining. Uh, the steel on this one is Dama steel, and we've got somewhat a modified worn clip style blade slash sheep's foot. I'm going to say it's more of a of a of a, of a, a modified worn clip style because you've got the blade going straight across. And then it kind of curves up because on a true one clip style blade, this would just be completely straight across all the way to the tip. But here, you know, to serve the purpose of some drawing cuts, they put a little curve on there uh, so you could do some drawing cuts on it. It's got a beautiful Damascus blade on it. Again, this knife runs on IKBS ball bearing system. Steel ball bearings. Uh... Yeah, we've got a blue titanium pocket clip, blue liners on it, so everything has that really beautiful matching theme. The most interesting thing about John Arnold's knives, and he's the only one that does this, he puts a backspacer that glows in the dark. Uh, I'm not going to show it to you right now, but yeah, these four dots, they will glow in the dark uh, so you can find your knife, I guess. It's pretty cool. One of the things about this knife that really that I really love is the fact that uh, the handle is rounded. If you hold it up, you can see uh, that there's like this round surface and it feels really good in the hand. It, it feel, you can feel, feel it filling up your hand as you grip it. So the ergos are nice. Uh, I think the blade with the curve up here might be a little bit off, you know, because that's really where your thumb is supposed to go. But the, uh, it should come down just a, a little bit lower, I think, but that's the design of the knife. I believe maybe the knife is meant for larger hands. I have small hands, so. The Simba Tactical Front Flipper by John Arnold. The next one is a custom piece made for me. Uh, this is called the Samsung Flipper, Front Flipper. And what we have is, uh, an M390 blade made by Cozy Steam Camp. 
We've got the red carbon fiber and white Westinghouse pivot ring with a white Westinghouse handle. Now, if you guys are not familiar with white Westinghouse, uh, this is actually refrigerator material from the 1950s. They found it in an old warehouse in South Africa, and they found out that it is completely almost indestructible material and perfect for uh, putting on knives. And as you can see, it's a very, very beautiful uh, handle. Cozy Steam Camp makes a fantastic piece. Now, here's what's interesting. Okay, you can tell by the screws that these are uh, two different materials put onto the knife. What's interesting about it is that if you run your finger across the top of this handle, you're not going to feel any separation between the red carbon fiber and the white Westinghouse. I don't even know how he does that, but the entire knife is is made by hand. Uh, Cozy Steam Camp. The blade steel is M390. And it's a front flipper. Uh, you have to be, you have to know how to, how to front, how to open a front flipper. It does take some skill, but not a great amount of skill. Basically, you, you take your thumb and put it at the edge of this knife, the edge of the tip there, and then you just pop it open. Simple as that. And you know, with some practice, you can even do it with your middle thing, with your index finger. It's a little, it's a little uncomfortable to reach over, but you get used to it after a while. Uh, so that one is. That, that way of opening it is quite, yeah, it's a little bit challenging. We've got uh, gold liners on the inside, gold titanium liners in there. And what's interesting about this one is if I hold up the knife to the camera, you can see they got these little gold sparkles inside. So that's kind of pretty. So there's the red uh, carbon fiber backspacer, which matches the bolster on the top there. A really pretty piece. Again, these were chosen for aesthetics, action, ease of use. Really, I mean, that this is the only way I could actually justify this top 10 list that I'm doing for you right now. This one is called the, uh, this is also one of a kind. Literally, the only one in the world uh, you will ever see and that uh, Clyde Chalnor will ever make. Uh, this knife is currently in production before I begin telling you what knife this is. This knife is currently in production with completely different uh, carbon fiber inlay design. This is the only one made that looks like this. If you were to order this knife from Clyde Chalnor, what you will get is a coffin shape, uh, a coffin shape on the front and then on the back, uh, not round like this, but a similar sort of uh, coffin shape but what he did on the newer version is he actually made it a mirror image of the front so that's kind of cool which is you know one of the reasons why i'm getting another one of these uh from him with the new design on it i have to have that that's just insane but as you can see the inlay goes around the back uh pivot here which uh clyde chelmore has communicated to me wasn't so much a pain in the ass as much as it was time consuming to do it for say even an order of 20 knives uh for him to do 20 knives with this design going around the pivot he just said i just he just said he couldn't do it it would just take way way too long to uh, shape the inlay to get it to fit around the circle like that so he came up with this sort of a, a coffin shape design which doesn't even touch the back pivot so this is the only one of a kind viper you will ever see made by uh clyde chalnor of all the knives on this table uh this is the only one where the details he went over the top i mean if you really take a good close look at the knife even these little teeny tiny pin screws were super polished to the point of ridiculous. They were like mirror polish that they actually pop. Uh, and the, the, of course the stripes on the back there match up absolutely perfectly. Don't know how he did that. And he's also got the action on this piece tuned in perfect. This is, this is not on ceramic bearings. This is just on regular steel ball bearings. But as you can see, the damn thing practically falls shut. 
Clyde Chalnor back in action, one of my favorite knife makers. And it's because of his attention to detail on these frame locks, on his frame lock knives, it, which is why he made the top 10 list as far as I'm concerned. You can see the attention to detail this guy puts in on his knives. Everything is perfect, including the centering is dead. I mean, this guy, he ta nobody takes more pride in putting a knife together than Clyde Chalmore. So moving on, uh, this one's kind of special. This is my Andre Thorburn uh, L48, uh, sorry, L, I believe it's L38 front flipper, excuse me. Uh, this one is very, very special because it's my very first true custom piece. When I say true custom, I mean I actually ordered it from the knife maker. I actually uh, worked with him on what materials I wanted to have on the knife and what design. Uh, I I had asked Andre Thorburn, I want you to put a bird on my knife, and he literally did that on this piece. So let's just take a look at this one, because this is probably the, uh, the most, I guess, yeah, pretty much the most aesthetically uh, pleasing knife on this table. So what we have here is an eagle, an American eagle on the bolster, uh, with white Westinghouse uh, handles on the back there. It is big. The eagle is basically a mirror image flipped. Absolutely beautiful. The steel on this guy is M390, and you can tell by the light that I have been using it. <laughs> See the scratches on the blade. So the knife does get used. It runs on ceramic ball bearings. Uh, Really just an awesome, awesome knife. Blue titanium liners, and the white Westinghouse uh, has sort of got like a brown uh, age look to it. If you look closely, it's almost like, uh, it looks like the beak of an eagle that slammed onto the handle for this knife. It's like he took the beak of an eagle and just carved it into a knife handle, but really, it's white Westinghouse. Uh, again, refrigerator material. Just absolutely beautiful. Uh, if you go on Instagram, you can see the, you know, you can see this knife. I posted it quite a few times. I think, I consider it Andre Thorburn's masterpiece, in my opinion. And uh, this is a one-of-a-kind handmade piece. Uh, I hope. There is another eagle knife out there, but uh, the, the eagle on the other knife that I've seen was monochromed. And this one is actually in color, so I'm kind of happy about that one. This one's never leaving my collection. So we move on to the next one. Uh, this is called the EDCTI for titanium. I don't know why it calls it that. That's what it's called because it's not made out of titanium. We've got what we have on this knife is uh, brown micarta on it. This knife is made by Willem Steenkamp. And this guy has been making knives for many, many years. He made my top 10 list uh, basically overall. Uh, he hit the top 10 on everything. Action, aesthetics, and ease of use. I mean, I put if I were to rate this knife overall for all three of those things, uh, yeah, I would put this at about a 9. Uh, it's the perfect size for EDC. That's one thing about Willem Steenkamp. He does not make very large knives. Uh, his knives don't go over 3.5. Uh, this is uh, this one's actually 3.25 inch blade, uh, and the largest blade size he makes is uh, yeah, 3.5 inches, which would be his Hornet Flipper. This one is not his Hornet Flipper, but it looks similar to a Hornet Flipper. Uh, again, it's called the EDCTI. Piece. The blade on this is M390. Yeah. Runs on ceramic ball bearings. We've got brown micarta as the one entire material on the knife, which is usually quite uh, rare. You never see a knife maker take one material and put it on, on all parts of the knife. But on this one, he did. Oops, nobody died. On this one, he did. Uh, that's also brown micarta. And we've got titanium. Uh, gold liners again on this one really very nice with a gold 
pocket clip and gold pivot. M390 for the blade. Willem Steam Cam. The next one is only the second frame lock in my collection, and this is the newest addition to my South African collection. I've been after this knife for three years. This is the Lexke, made by Trevor Berger, and I have been carrying this like crazy for the past week. I can't seem to stop carrying it. I don't know when I'm going to stop carrying it, but it's quickly becoming a favorite in my collection go-to. Uh, I have used it already, which is one of the reasons why I got it, because we got this beautiful stone-washed, uh, acid-washed, stone-washed blade with all the scratches on it, so you could use this and not even tell that it was used. Uh, runs on ceramic ball bearings. The way this knife feels when you flip it is very, very addictive. It's a very, very fidgety uh, knife. I mean, I just cannot get enough of flipping it even backwards like you just saw me do that there uh this knife is just absolutely fantastic you've got an uh an m39 uh sorry an lmax steel blade the only lmax blade in my collection we've got a nice beautiful blue pivot ring you've got the uh black carbon fiber inlay on the front side of the knife and we've got titanium blue backspacer titanium blue pocket clip and titanium blue pivot ring uh, as you can see on my Clyde Chalnor, there's actually another inlay on the back. That is sort of like a signature for Clyde Chalnor. Trevor Berger does not do that, but he does not get points off for doing that. Uh, you yeah, know, because the knife overall is just, it's just an excellent, excellent front flipper piece. We've got a beautiful, uh, sheep's foot style blade on this one completely brand new Trevor Berger man yeah I love this one definitely the next one is probably the only uh well no this is the second full dress piece that I own I have been treating this one like a safe queen I haven't I have to admit I haven't used this one uh I just love looking at it and flipping at it flipping it looking at it flipping it and then putting it back in my knife drawer I am perfectly happy spending that much money to do that for this knife and do nothing else uh let's so let's go ahead and take a look we've got this beautiful blue timascus bolster with the gorgeous gorgeous black marble carbon fiber uh scales on both sides of the knife you got a blue titanium pocket clip uh with blue titanium liners with a rope twist design Followed by a, Dima a Damascus back spacer with a matching Damascus blade. When we say full dress piece, it means that every part of the knife has some kind of art on it. There's no empty anywhere where you look for your eyes on this knife. There's, everything is just full dressed. You know, you got there's bling here, there's bling here, there's bling here, the rope filing, the blade, everything. Just absolutely beautiful. So as beautiful as this knife is, you can see why I treat it like a safe queen. Now, I've saved the best for last uh, out of the top ten. I'll explain why. And I've talked about this knife over and over and over again. I don't know how Deathsworn does it. Uh, but this is the uh, Deshorn Mvubu. I am currently in the works to get a third one of these made. Uh, I've got two of these, and this is this one is the, uh, is the is the one that I use most often. Uh, so that's why it made my top top ten list. And there's another reason. Uh, this is the only knife on the table that does not run on ceramic bearing it, bearings. It just runs only on washers not phosphor bronze washers i had spoken with deshorn he makes his washers out of brass and i don't know if that makes a difference as far as the action on it but the way he the way this knife was built as far as the action you cannot tell at all that this knife runs on washers only because look at that no ball bearings, just washers only. 
That is ridiculous. See how that falls shut with just barely even jerking it? I've never seen washer knives do that. Uh, there is no blade play on this knife at all. This thing is as solid as a rock. We've got uh, blue, electric blue carbon fiber scales. I wish this was one of a kind, but it's not. There is quite a few out there with the same handle material, but it is very beautiful. It's very beautiful. That's one of the reasons why I'm getting a third one like this with washers on it. Um, yeah, I would like the knife to uh, have just washers only, not ball bearings. That's the fascination I have with this piece. The steel on it is also exotic. We have Nitrobe 77. This is a very, very special steel made by Deshorn. Uh, the steel itself goes through a rigorous heat treatment process. And then he quenches it in liquid nitrogen four times to give it strength. And the steel is cut crazy. I've already cut my finger on this blade five times since I've used it. Uh, I have to actually be very, very careful when I use this one. Uh, I use it for heavy duty boxes. Uh, and then once I use it, I wipe the crap down so it looks like it's brand new. But uh, yeah, there's scratches that are on it that I won't be able to get rid of anymore. So, but still, I have been using this knife and because of the heat treatment on it, um, this is all that's worn away and it still looks somewhat brand new and I've been using it heavily, heavily I must say, and you can't even tell. We've got a carbon fiber backspacer which I thought was a nice choice. And he's very famous for that, uh, ooh, can't get the camera to come into focus there. Um, yeah, he's very famous for that wavy twist design you see on the back so there you have it my top 10 uh i don't know the ones that didn't make the list like i said it doesn't mean that i don't love those knives i do it's just that these knives seem to be the ones that wind up in my pocket uh pretty much every day and if i want to have something different then i carry one of the others that i haven't carried for a while uh, but yeah, these specifically are the top 10 in my South African knife collection. And what's interesting about this is that each of the knives is made by just one maker. Here we have J.D. Van de Winter. We've got Andre Van Heerden. We have John Arnold. We have Kosi Steenkamp. We have uh, Clyde Chalnor, Andre Thorburn, Willem Steenkamp, Kosi Steenkamp's brother. We've got Trevor Berger, Arugus Bumeris, and Des Horn. So those are my top 10 knife makers giving me my top 10 knives. And that's basically how this came, all came out. Uh, you know, so this is my top 10. I just wanted to say I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit like and subscribe if you have any questions regarding any of these knives. I'll be very happy to answer it for you. If you have any, uh, you know, if you're looking to get a custom yourself and, you you know, maybe you're looking for someone to talk to uh, for advice on what to get as far as getting a custom piece and you want to ask my opinion on any one of these guys on this table, um, by all means, please do. I will probably be doing a separate video just on the knife makers alone and their dedication to their craft and their customer service because I have never felt customer service the way I do with the guys on this table and all, all the other, other, you know, 24 that are in my case right now. Uh, that's how much pride these guys take in making these knives. They will make sure that the knife that they make for you will last you an entire lifetime. So keep that in mind if you're thinking about getting your very first custom. This is Omar the Knife Shark Guy signing off. Hoping you've enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and I will see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching and you guys have a wonderful, wonderful evening.